Turning your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58, my subject this morning, fasting to defeat old enemies. Fasting, fasting. I preached a Sunday night on fasting for your breakthrough. But we started this year with a 21-day corporate fast from January 4th through January the 25th. 21 days of prayer and fasting. During this season as your pastor, I have also emphasized first fruits and giving a special first fruit offering to honor the Lord. We are doing all of this in order to set the stage for 2015 because giving, prayer, and fasting activates the favor of God. My wife, Teresa, and I, we practice these three principles. We practice the one on giving by giving our first fruits, a, our first week's salary we give right back to the church. And I've done this for several years, and God has richly blessed us, and I've tapped into something that uh, if you want to tap into it, that's between you and the Lord. But I can tell you one thing, it has certainly brought God's favor and blessings upon my life. First fruits belong to the Lord, and that's why we gather on Sunday, the first day of the week, to worship. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, holy living, righteous living, and all the stuff that you will ever need, Jesus promises, it will be added unto you. See, the battles that you are fighting, they're not your battles, they're the Lord's battles. And if you will honor the Lord, he will defeat your enemies. And I believe that this is the year for many of you to defeat some old enemies, which brings me to my text. Isaiah 58, verse 6. God said, is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Now, pay particular attention to the last part of that, that phrase, that you break every yoke and remember it. You can get a yoke-breaking anointing that will break every chain off of your life. My subject this morning, fasting to defeat old enemies. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the anointed singing, how we have already been seated together in heavenly places, how your people, Lord, have rejoiced from the time we started our services here today to this very moment, your people have been rejoicing, realizing who they are, who they belong to as a child of the King. Bless your people, Lord. And today I ask you to break every chain, every old enemy, Lord, that is holding people in bondage. Give us revelation from the Word of God of how you have broken chains in the past and the principles of the Word of God and how we can break those very chains. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want you to look at my text once again, Isaiah 58 and 6. God said, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. And look at this, and that you break every yoke. God said, I have chosen this fast to do three things. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden." and to let the oppressed go free. But I want you to look at the latter part of that verse and pay particular attention to it. God says, when you fast, you, 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 through your human willpower and through the fact that you have set your affection on things above and not upon the, the flesh, God says, when you do this, when you fast, when you give that portion of your being to me, then I'm going to anoint you to where you can break every chain and destroy every yoke. Do you see that? Fasting helps you break the yoke of the enemy. In other words, you're going to defeat some old enemies and break some chains off your life that have held you for a long time. Sometimes we think our enemies are people, but sometimes an enemy can be debt. It can be a disease. Your enemy, it could be fear. Sometimes the enemy can be a bad marriage that you need to work on and you need to correct it. How can two walk together except they agree? Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands as unto the Lord. Submit yourselves to one another 
in the fear of God. And God says, I want you to forgive as I have forgiven you, and I want you to love others as I have loved you. And he says, like the Apostle Paul come along and said, if I forgave anything for your sake, forgave I it in the person of Christ. If you don't have the power to forgive in your human spirit, do it through the spirit of Christ that is in you. Sometimes that enemy can be a problem that just keeps reoccurring and popping up over and over again in your life. Just about the time you think you have finally won the victory, that old enemy sticks its head up once again. I want to tell you this morning about an enemy that every one of us have to face. I want you to reach over and grab your other arm or hand and squeeze it. Squeeze it real hard. You want to know know who the greatest enemy that we face at times is? It is called the flesh. We pamper it. We feed it. We take care of it. But the truth is sometimes we are our greatest enemies. One of the greatest enemies that you will ever face is that old flesh that we all love so much. Do you know what that flesh will do to you after you've done so much for it? It will send you straight to hell if you allow the flesh to do that. I don't know. Maybe your enemy is drug or alcohol or lust or some type of addiction such as tobacco that keeps uh, you craving for it. Your enemy could be your temper that you cannot control and you need victory in that area of your life. And so what do you do when it seems like the enemy is getting the upper hand? That's when you fast. That's when you pray. That's when you focus on God and not upon the problems. Do like the psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Mama can't help me. Daddy can't help me. Brother and sister in the church can't help me. I can't even take care of it myself, so I'm going to lift my eyes up to where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who saved me, who washed me, who cleansed me from my sin in his own precious blood, who gave me victory in Jesus so I could have life and have that more abundantly. Go on and praise him, hallelujah, for what he's already done in your life. Amen. One of the greatest enemies that you will ever face is that flesh. So what do you do? You fast and you pray during the onslaught of the battle. There are some old enemies in some of your lives that keep popping up over and over again. And I believe that this is the year to defeat those old enemies. Do you know what alcohol will do for you after you have pampered it? The Bible says at the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder like a viper, like a deadly, poisonous snake. You don't need to keep looking down at the snake. The problem is not going away if that poison is in your system. You need to take an upward look. You need to set your affection on things above and not upon the things of this earth because the poison is in you. There's no need to look for the snake. What you need to do is look up to Jesus and ask him to give you victory in that area. Lust, after you have entertained it, it will destroy your home. Lust will destroy your reputation. Think of the preachers who have fallen from grace and, and presidents who have, uh, this has come out in their lives and great businessmen and, and people, entertainers that we see on television and what it has done to their lives. Adultery will destroy your marriage. And in today's economy, it could destroy your body with STDs, with sexually transmitted disease. Young people, stay away from fornication. God said the marriage bed is holy and undefiled. So tobacco, after you have petted it, it will leave you with lung cancer. And that is a medical fact. It's not what the preacher says. That's what the medical profession says. Your temper will destroy your relationship with others, and it can kill any love that another person may have for you. Your flesh, if you feed it, your flesh will do some terrible things to you. And that's why you need to participate 
in this season of 21 days of prayer and fasting and to deny that old flesh. I promise you, when you fast and deny yourself your necessary food, the inner man, the spirit man, the hidden man of your heart, he will grow stronger. And when your flesh is weak, that is when your spirit is strong. That, that's what Paul was talking about when he said, when I am weak, then am I strong. When I realize that I can't do it in my human strength, and I turn to God, and I humble myself to God, and I cast all my cares upon him, that's when God meets me. God will meet you. God will exonerate you. God will lift you up out of that pit. God will give you the victory because Jesus humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And that's why God highly exalted him. He went all the way to Calvary's cross. He submitted himself totally to the will of the Father so that you and I could become ours and join ours with him in his kingdom. Go on and praise him for his wonderful works to the children of men. I've got three points I want to share with you this morning. First of all, what is an old enemy? Do you remember when the children of Israel were thirsting to death in the wilderness? And they go and drink water, and suddenly the Amalekites, they attack them. And God got angry with the Amalekites and cursed them because they attacked his people when they were thirsty. What will an old enemy do? Well, the scriptures tell us that God says, I will war and utterly destroy the Amalekites because of what they have done to my people. See, God is serious about his word. So in 1 Samuel, King Saul was given orders by the prophet of God to utterly destroy the Amalekites. Saul goes, but he does not obey the orders. He spares the king of the Amorites, a guy named King Agag. Now, I want you to see this. He spares him. And Samuel the prophet because he had a word from God, and he was called from God to preach and to prophesy. And he's standing, telling God's people what to do. But King Saul, no, King Saul's going to do what the flesh says do. And, and the prophet is trembling in fear when he finds out that Agag and some of the other Amalekites are alive. And Samuel takes the sword. Samuel cuts the king to pieces, and he tells King Saul, you should have obeyed the Lord because this enemy is after your destiny. I'm here to tell some of you, you need to obey God because the enemy is after your destiny. Amen. The prophet Samuel said that this enemy wants to destroy you and God's people. And God put him in your hands, Saul, but you didn't destroy him. Listen to me. It was the Amalekites later that David fought at Ziglag. If Samuel had handled them there when he had the chance, David would not have had to have fought the Amalekites later. It was the Amalekites that burned David's home and who took his cattle and his herds, his gold and his silver. It was the Amalekites who kidnapped their wives and their children, all because Saul didn't do what he should have done. Now, later when King Saul is dying, I want you to follow me through this story. King Saul is on the battlefield. He's been wounded. He's dying. And he didn't want his body to be mutilated by the enemy. And he calls a man over to where he is, and he said, I need you to finish the job. This man later goes to David hoping to get a reward. And he tells him how he slew King Saul, and David said, who are you? He said, I am an Amalekite. In other words, the enemy that you don't conquer when you're strong, that same enemy will come back to you when you are weak. Because King Saul didn't conquer the enemy when he was strong, his enemy conquered him. Some of you need to defeat some old enemies, and you need to do it now. You don't need to keep putting this thing off. You need at the first of this year to decide this is my year of victory. 
This is the year that I'm going to work with God, and we're going to break every chain. I hear the chains falling. Glory to God. I can hear them in the spirit of claim. I was thinking as he was singing that, I hear the chains falling. I was thinking, man, I need to pull out my chain. I got a big heavy chain. that I preached the sermon, uh, Jesus, the chain breaker. I wish I had it right now. I'd throw it out there and let you hear the chains falling. But some of you need to defeat some of those old enemies, and you need to do it now. Because look at this. Generations later, 500 years after Saul fought the Amalekites, we find Esther and the other Jews, and they are in a big, big jam. Esther is in the kingdom, and she thinks she's safe. She's the king's wife, Queen Esther. And Haman, an enemy of the Jews, is sitting in the palace, and Haman is an Agite, a descendant of King Agag. And the point is this. The only reason that 500 years later that Esther and the Jews are not safe is because somebody didn't defeat that enemy 500 years ago. 500 years before, God had given King Saul the opportunity to finish the job, but he didn't do it. What was it that brought the victory for Esther, Mordecai, and the rest of the Jews? It was prayer and fasting. Do you see that? If not, go back and read the story. Secondly, you are fighting a generational battle. You are fighting a generational battle. God is a generational God. And the devil, your enemy, he is a generational enemy. And you got to know that. And if you don't defeat those old enemies and wipe them out, then your children and your grandchildren will have to fight them. I, I, I started to put Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge where they don't obey the word of God. But I said, no, Lord, I, I'm going to just move on with this thing. But, see, if you don't fight, God said, if you don't obey me, I will forget your children. Go read Hosea 4 and 6. That's what God says. So if you don't defeat your old enemies and wipe them out, then your children, your grandchildren, and they will have to fight them. See, we're on the enemy's turf, and you've got to know that. This is not a playground. We're on a battlefield, and it's a battle for immortal souls. God said, I want you to suit up and put on the whole armor of God because you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Don't let that flesh take you down. Get full of God, full of the Lord, full of the power of his might, and go after it. Hallelujah. Go after those blessings. Go after some devils. Don't wait till he comes to attack you. Go after him through prayer. Go after him through fasting. Go after him through giving. Go after him through studying the word of God. Go after him by having an intimate, close relationship with Jesus Christ. Go on and praise him, hallelujah, because God wants you to go after it. He wants to give you a greater victory, hallelujah. See, we're on the enemy's turf, and it's a battlefield, and the battle's for immortal souls. And too many of God's children, they are not suited up. They don't have the whole armor of God on. And you can tell it by their prayerlessness. You can tell it by their lack of passion. You can tell it by their lack of concern. You can tell it by their lack of commitment to the Lord. You can tell it by their lack of commitment to read the Word of God all the way through. Why, we've got people sitting in the church, and many of you have been in here for years and years and years, and you have never read your Bible through. You don't need to study it and read it because Pastor Nelson does it, says it. You need to do it because the Holy Ghost says to. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And if you don't read it all, how can you rightly divide it all? I'll tell you what will happen to you if you read portions of it. You will develop your own little canon, and you'll have a set of scriptures that you think everything uh, it is the, the principles are, are guided by your little canon. But when you take the whole book and you take the whole gospel 
and you get the full revelation of what God has for you, then you can win the victories that that old enemy that keeps sticking his head up and popping up, you can whip him in Jesus' mighty name. Get into the book. Get into prayer. Oh, and by the way, prayer is not a one-way dialogue. Prayer is where you talk to God, and then you open this precious word, and you listen to what God has to say. And by the way, God didn't just send uh, writers that are gifted to write and give you revelation. If you read their books, and I suggest you read some good books, all you will get is their revelation. But if you read the book, the Holy Ghost will talk to you, and you'll get your own revelation. Hallelujah. Remember this. We're not on a playground. The kingdom is a battlefield, and you cannot afford to get lax. You can't afford to get casual in your walk with God. You must understand that you are in a war. And when the battle hits, you don't have time to search for your stuff. You know, you've heard me tell about when I was first in combat and the first night, the third night I was there, how I woke up and the whole world was blowing up around me. I didn't have time to get ready. I wasn't ready, but I promise you one thing. I never made that mistake again as long as I was in that combat zone. Stay battle ready at all times. Amen. You've got to be battle ready at all times, and that's why some of you have never defeated some of those old enemies. When the battle hits, you've got to be suited up. You've got to be prayed up. You've got to be fired up. You've got to be praised up. Hallelujah. It takes the anointing of God to defeat that enemy and to destroy that yoke. Some of you have been around that same old mountain year after year, Simply because you have never defeated that old enemy. And you need to understand this. God wants to promote you. I'll say that again. God wants to promote you. Promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. God is the judge. He puts down one and he setteth up another. But God will never promote you until you defeat that old enemy that's been in your way for so long. You need to defeat that old enemy because God wants to promote you. And I want you to watch how God does it and how the battle intensifies when God is getting ready to promote you. When you first got saved, think back. You were just fighting for you. You were just fighting to stay saved. Amen. You were fighting to get the victory over your own flesh. But as you have walked with God a few years, the battle, it has intensified. See, David went from a lion to a bear to Goliath. But later we find him in the valley of Rephraim, and Rephraim is a valley that was filled with giants. It's not just one Goliath this time. It's a whole valley that has been filled with with giant. Do you ever feel like that uh, about your life? Then praise God. Praise God. Pull out praise. Praise is a weapon. That's why I'm so radical in my praise. I could care less what other people think about it. I just know that God inhabits the praises of his people. And when I whip out prayer and when I whip out praise, glory to God. When you go and praise him, when you start praising God, God comes on the scene, and God will break every chain. I said, God will break every chain. Say it to your neighbor. God will break every chain. Say it again. God will break every chain. Hallelujah. See, the reason that the battle seems so intense is because you're not fighting for yourself now. Maybe you're fighting for your family. Maybe you're fighting for that job. Maybe you're fighting for your marriage. Maybe you're fighting for your ministry. Who knows? You know. I don't need to know. But you know and I know you've got to defeat that old enemy. See, there are some things that we can conquer. And when we do, future generations will not have to deal with them. Now, I told you the story about the Amalekites for a reason. And here it is. There are some things that we can conquer, and when we conquer them, future generations will not have to deal with those same issues that you've been dealing with. 
Some of you may be thinking, why should I fight this thing? Why should I fight the flesh? Why should I fight this habit? Why should I fight this addiction? Why do I need to overcome it? Because if you overcome it, you can break the power of that thing off of future generations in your family. See, poverty is a spirit, and you need to fight, and you need to defeat it. And you need to take God's principles of seed time and harvest time, and you need to incorporate them into your life. You need to become very methodical methodical about how you handle your finances. You need to become very methodical about how you spend your monies and how you spend when you don't have the money in hand to take care of it. Payday's coming someday, and the Bible says that the borrower is servant to the lender. The devil didn't do it. You did it. You made those decisions yourself, and some of you sit in the church under a heavy anointing uh, uh, and have seen God's blessings, yet you refuse to tithe. You refuse to take God at his word. God says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. My God, help me. And prove me now, here will say the Lord God of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven, I will pour you out a blessing. Well, it doesn't look right on paper. Well, I've told you a hundred times I'm an accountant, and nothing I do looks right on paper. I just do what God's Word says because I know that my heavenly Father watches over me. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and all the gold in the hills and all the potatoes in the hills. Everything belongs to God. You belong to God. You're bought with the price, and you ought to honor God and quit robbing Him. You said, are you saying I'm a robber? No, Malachi said you're robbing God. Now, hallelujah. I'm trying to be good this morning. Amen. But I am telling you something good. I'm telling you the truth. Because that is God's economy, tithes and offerings. And when you do it your way, you're saying, God, I'm smarter than you are. That's what you're really saying. You're saying, God, I know how to handle my money better than you know to handle my, how to handle my money. And, and so, you know, I stand up here uh, last week with a check from somewhere, $400, not from this community. I stood here today with one for $300. I've had them thousands of dollars. You say, where does all that money come from? Because this church gives. We're giving people. We're giving church. And I found that in the Bible. I said, God, I'm going to try this thing. Seed time harvest. It works. Glory to God. See, I want to tell you this, that gambling is a compulsive spirit. And you've got to fight it. And you've got to defeat it. Alcoholism and drug addiction, it is a compulsive spirit. And you must fight it. And you must defeat it. Some of you are first-generation Christians. And the thing that you are wrestling with right now is not just about you getting the victory. But the truth is you are wrestling for future generations. Amen. You're on not only breaking the power of that spirit off of your life, but you're breaking the power of that spirit off of your children and your children's children. God is a generational God, and the devil is a generational devil. And the same sets and the same bends that you find in a family, if somebody doesn't get saved and break the power of that addiction off of that family and break the power of that spirit off the family, your children and your children's children will face those same enemies because God is generational. God says the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting and is righteousness to the children's children. I like that. But God says I will visit the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. That takes care of a lot, doesn't it? So you need to get victory. God is a generational God, and you need to win that victory for yourself and for future generations, and also for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I tell you, you need a testimony. I once was bound, but now I'm free. Ain't no chains going to hold me down. Glory to God. And I'm not letting anything hold me back from a closer walk. Just a closer walk with thee, 
Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all harm. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, daily walk close to thee. Mother and daddy sing them in church. You've heard me tell it. And they was getting me. And it's such a message in those songs. And, and so much Bible in there. God says, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Just the closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, sweet Jesus. Let it be, oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Brother Woody, you look like you're ready to have a dancing fit, one of those benefits. <laughs> Glory to God. Just a closer walk. Woo! I think I'll take a little praise break. <laughs> Woo! Glory. 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 He'll put victory in your soul. He'll put a pep in your step. He'll put joy unspeakable in your heart. He'll give you the peace of God that passes all understanding. Go on and praise him. Let's take a praise break. Come on. Stand up and praise him. Let's give God some praise in the house. You know what I'm talking about. Glory. Glory. I feel a little shout coming on. I feel a little dance coming on. I can hear the chains falling. I said, I can hear the chains falling. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah! You said, I don't understand that. Well, you get full of this Holy Ghost and fire, you will understand it. I said, you get full of the Holy Ghost and fire. My God, come here, brother. Come here. Come here, brother. Glory to God. Glory. It's about to burst wide open in him anyway. Look at that. Come here, brother. Glory to God. Glory. Come here, brother. Glory. You never dance. Come here, brother. Go and praise him. It's time for God's people get radical. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Glory. Glory. Woo! Glory. It gets sweeter as the days go by. I said it gets sweeter as the days go by. My Lord and I, glory. Woo! Glory. Break every chain, Lord. Break every chain. Glory. Woo! I hear the chains falling. Glory. Don't take that blessing, sister. Take it all. Take it, take it, take it. Take it. Glory. Glory. <laughs> I hear the chains falling. Come here, Pastor Nick. Come here. Sing that part. I hear the chains falling for me. I hear the chains falling, oh, I hear the chains falling, I hear the chains falling, oh, I hear the chains falling, so break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, oh, break every chain, break every chain, 
break every chain. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Glory. I'm going to just stop preaching. Praise God. Come on, brother. Bring that praise team on up here. Come on. I got more, but I'll save it for later. I, I hear the Holy Ghost saying, I got some chains I want to break. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Pastor Dick, come on, sing that song. Amen. I'll give him a chance to get set up here. See, God wants to promote some of you. That's the third point while he's coming. But God will never promote you until he finds an enemy to qualify you for promotion. David would still be a shepherd boy in history had it not been for Goliath. When God gets ready to promote you, God goes enemy shopping. Your enemy can do more to propel you into victory than your friends could ever do for you. Amen. What if God had given David a midget to fight? Can you imagine them singing about David? David slew a midget. David slew a midget. No, they said Saul has killed his, killed his thousand, and David has killed his ten thousand. Nobody's going to get excited about you defeating a midget. So when God chooses the enemy that is connected to your destiny, he doesn't match it to your size. He matches the enemy to your destiny. I said God does not match the enemy to your size. God matches the enemy to your destiny. And that's why you need to become a radical praiser, a radical giver, a radical prayer, a radical faster. When God chooses to promote you, he chooses an enemy that is connected to your destiny. That's why I'm a praiser. Hallelujah. God will bring you through every bit of it. And God will break every chain. Sing it, brother. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus To break every chain, break every chain, break every, break every chain. chain To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain Come on and sing it There is power in the name of Jesus there is power. I want you to come fill these altars up. Let's get in the altar. And tell God that's some change. I want to break off my life and off my family's life. God, I know you're doing it for me, but you're doing it for future generations. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Make this song a prayer. God, break every chain. Every chain off my children. My grandchildren, there's an Every army chain, Lord. rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. I hear the 
Break every chain, break every chain. 